So welcome. Um, we're here to talk today about ELISA and what's happening in the project, as well as moving our and you know what's emerging and what's interesting. So we've got a pretty good uh, lineup here for you. Um, for those who want to join, we have a Zoom room going. And if you want to take a picture of that QR code, um, the information is there. And hopefully, if you are wanting to interact with us, we don't have a chat channel. So if you wanted to get into the Zoom room and uh, chat or ask questions, that may be a way of getting some interaction going between the virtual participants and the people here in the room today. And I will just leave that up for another minute. <laughs> I'm not going to say the other. So, let's go. There we go. So, for today, um, we've got, um, we're going to start off with a bit of an introduction about Elisa, and then we'll be having a discussion about the automotive use case. That's one of our more active groups. And then we will be having, at 2.30, um, we'll have a, a virtual participant coming in, and uh, she'll be going through how we've been looking at analyzing the Linux kernel and subsystems. We'll have a bit of a break and then come back um, at looking at analyzing Linux as part of a wider system. And then we will, um, I, I think we've just heard that our aerospace person can't make it today, so we may not be skipping that part forward and trying to give a little bit of information there, but not much. Um, and then just questions. So that's the outline for today. If people have things they want to interject into the schedule, you know, please come see us at the break. Philip is here, I'm here from the project, and we're happy to take the discussion where we want it to go. So with that, what does it mean to have Linux in a safety critical system? That's what Elisa's standing for, enabling Linux and safety critical systems. Well, at the whole of it all, we have to assess whether the system is safe. And that requires understanding a system. It's not just Linux, it's actually understanding your system that Linux is participating in. And, you know, Understanding Linux in the context of that system and what parts of Linux are being used is what we have to be focusing on to do the analysis properly. And then, realistically, Linux is a variety of components. It's a very, very rich ecosystem. And so, how do you assess which pieces are actually getting engaged in a potential safety function? And then, quite frankly, we've got a lot of gaps here. And how do we identify the gaps? So, these are the thinking that was have gone in behind Elisa's story. And, you know, in safety critical systems, uh, the Linux kernel has a large development ecosystem, which is the strength. It's probably one of the most active projects out there. Um, stats I keep in my head are nine commits an hour and one commit bag, bag fixes per hour, an LTS backport. Um, so we see a lot of change happening in that code base. There's a lot of focus on security. There's a lot of analysis that goes on in this space for fuzzing and so forth, and things that help improve the quality. Um, there's multi-core support, there's, you know, the hardware support is unmatched in the Linux kernel. And we have many experts available. So a lot of the pieces that we need are effectively there. The challenge becomes, okay, can we have hard real-time? Well, actually, that's finally getting merged upstream and hopefully we should be there any day now. Um, and then, you know, do we have proven safety compliant development processes? Well, that's the one of the bigger challenges because the standards were not written with something like Linux in mind. And so how do we start doing the analysis in a way that we can actually be effective? And this is, you know, how we tackle these differences. And this has been the problem that's out there. And we know Linux is being used in safety critical systems. The people won't admit it, because it's all under NDA, but we know it's out there. And the question is, you know, how do people do the analysis so they can trust it? And what are the requ key requirements and so forth? So how we can sort of get these ta gaps tackled is our challenge. So what we've been trying to look at is, you know, functional safety at the heart of it, it seems to be about managing the risk in product development. Um, and, you know, to understand the risks in the system, you have to understand the system and the kernel knowledge. And not a lot of people have that deep kernel knowledge. There's a lot of kernel experts out there that have the knowledge, but surfacing it in a way that they, people can consume it has been one of the challenges. So I think you know there's a lot of the starting points for understanding this, but nothing's really pulling it together in a way that's digestible and consumable, be it for the people who are doing the assessments or the developers doing things. So what we need to do is figure out how we can you know collaborate between the people who are doing the assessments and the people who are actually developing products.
my apologies. I am coming over, I'm just getting over a cold, and it's showing up. Anyhow, part of the um, challenge right now for us is understanding the limits um, of what we can collaborate on. You know, this project is not one to make a system safe, okay? We can't engineer it. We can't ensure that when we come up with processes, that you'll apply them properly. But we can at least come up with things that we can recommend. And, you know, we can't um, create an out-of-tree Linux kernel that is fit for all safety critical applications. Um, there's always that continuous process improvement that's happening, and there are companies that want to make a business model of that, and that's good. But <laughs> but we can, and we can't relieve you of your responsibilities and legal obligations. But we can provide people to collaborate with and build up industry norms. So, getting it to the stage where we all agree on a common way of doing things helps us move forward. And these are some of the people who are collaborating today with us. So we've got a fairly wide set of participants who have been willing to be visible without saying they're trying to collaborate here to make this better, including a lot of open source projects, like civil infrastructure, automotive grade Linux, and so forth, um, that are actually supporting the project and are participating in trying to figure out what a best practice is. So the mission of ELISA is to define and maintain a common set of elements, processes, and tools. We have some code out there, but that is not the main focus. It's not like a project creating code. It's a project creating processes and tools. And we want to do this to make things amenable to safety certification. So the scope does include software and documentation development. And everything is being done under an OSI approved license. But um, the hope is that we're coming up with processes and methodologies that people can apply outside of the context of this project in our work groups. So how are we sort of approaching this from a technical strategy perspective? Well, we have um, sorry, some deliverables coming out of the Elisa project. And sorry. What we're trying to get, sorry, what we're trying to get with them is examples. All this stuff right now happens behind NDAs and no one has examples. So when they've worked out things, they can't share it. So they sort of know what they're doing and they may convince some assessors that they know what they're doing. On the other hand, they can't share it, no one can li listen from it, learn from it. And given that they're all working with open source, it seems like a bit of a waste. So what we're trying to do is do things in the open, try to work through assessments in the open, work through ideas and methodologies so that we can have things that are reference for other people to build from and then the assessors will have something to look at. And thank you for your patience dealing with me with this cold. So I thank you again. <laughs> now, the way we're sort of working this and structure ourselves is we've got some various working groups that um, some are focusing on verticals, like automotive, medical, and aerospace. And you'll hear a bit of those today. But then we have groups that are looking at engineering processes for open source. How do they work? What's the architecture look like for the Linux kernel? That's a safety architecture group. That's what are the features, how we decompose it, how we explain the interfacing. And then we have a whole bunch of config options right now in the Linux kernel. Um, how do they implicate with safety when they're actually turned on or off? So those groups are looking at that. We have another group that's systems, and that's trying to put it all together. We've got the Linux kernel working with the Zen hypervisor, working with an RTOS. That's what systems are looking like today. We've got all these pieces coming together and to come up with something reference becomes useful because it's an open place to experiment. So we also are having tools and code implementations to help with this whole system side. And all of these together become the Elisa deliverables and what we're working on as a project. So let's look a little bit more about those working groups I just introduced. The safety architecture one is being led by Red Hat. The safety architecture one is looking at the Linux kernel and going down and doing analysis of parts of the Linux kernel. The Linux features one is the um, mobile and the Intel are taking sort of the point on that one of what is actually happening. 
And they're sort of studying what's going on with which options. And right now, they're focusing on real time, because that's almost upstream. The tool in investigation is coming up with tools that we work into the flows to make it available. And Electrobit and CodeThinker are active there. And then the OSEP one is the processes. Um, CodeThink is being very active on uh, taking the lead in that one. And then Systems Bosch, which you'll hear from Philip a little bit later, is how we put a reference system together and pull some of all this together. Mm. So those verticals, um, aerospace is very new. And Boeing is basically pulling together people in the industry to actually look at the problems uh, for uh, 178C and what the implications are for Linux. Uh, the automotive working group, uh, Bosch is taking the point on that one. And in medical devices, we've got an open source project. And so some of the folks from CodeThink and myself are looking at how we can actually decompose a problem and do the analysis properly. Um, so this, these are sort of what we're after. You can see this. I don't know if this is a, does this have a pointer? Yeah, it does. So, you know, this is the AGL dashboard. There's a little dangerous thing up there. That's it from a telltale. That's all, you know, basically there's a lot behind getting that there and getting it working, and Philip will go into that details. Here is um, an insulin pump system. Everything's open source, so we can talk about it. See, you know, see the problem about talking about things. And so these are the examples we've been using for doing some of the analysis up till now. We'll find more over time. The systems um, working groups, fitting everything together and making it so that we can actually get the use cases, combining them in a real system, having that real system be reproducible without special hardware, and then you know working with things like Yocto and build systems and coming out with intermediate hypervisors and how this all can hook together is the challenge for us. And hopefully, if we can get this system set up, then if people need to substitute other things in for their own environments, they have places to plug into and help refine this reference. That's what we're trying for anyhow. Now, in terms of the artifacts and activities we're going after, pretty much uh, we're looking at elements, which are the software, processes for working with the elements, tools to help us in documentation. Um, there's elements from each of these working groups um, are doing parts of things and participating in these different ways. And so we've got things like white papers. We've been sending things up to the Linux kernel for documentation on how to go about doing traces, for instance, and using what's in the kernel to do the traces to get the evidence you need for the flows. How the call trees are doing, what the code checkers are. Processes, we've been really, um, we started off in medical working with STPA, it proved to be a very useful technique. It's being used in automotive and in the architecture group now. And so adopting some of these newer techniques and showing how they can be working from a system context is good. We've also got things like uh, Meta Elisa for pulling all the pieces together. So a little bit later, um, Philip will be basically going through the automotive and the systems working group in much more detail, so I'm not going to spend much time right now. Um, a little bit more on the safety architecture one, though. Um, you know, what are the subsystems in Linux? How do you actually care? Like, how do they interact? Is it going to cause problems? These are things that people, you know, we have well-defined interfaces in the Linux kernel, the TPI and so forth, but with inside, there are things that have been tested and known to be working, by, but it's not documented anywhere effectively. I think you find it in parts of documentation, you find it in parts of man page, but looking at it from the safety perspective doesn't seem to be there. So how do we get to the stage where we can actually explain that yes, you're okay to use this, and what are the requirements from the kernel that should be held to, that you could count on for this type of work? Um, what we're doing right now in this group is looking at STP analysis inside the kernel and looking at tools and techniques. Um, this team came up with a call tree analysis and a kernel as nav, KS nav tool for looking at representations of source code to try to understand how it all fits together and interacts. I 
more dinner in the morning than in the afternoon. <laughs> Anyhow. Um, and so it's, it's providing insights about how the kernel is all constructed. That's what we're trying to do with this group. So everything is up on GitHub now, um, or at least it's in that direction. And so if you want to go play with it, it's there to play with. For the Linux features in the safety critical system, um, there's all sorts of um, ways of trying to understand how the config options that are there on the kernel may interact with the safety side of it. Um, what actually this plays together with and understanding how the internals and externals work and what you turn on, what you don't turn on, figuring out what's really relevant and get that solid understanding is what this group is trying to get at. Um, what we're sort of doing with it right now is uh, taking a look at the preempt RT since it's almost upstream and there wasn't much documentation available for it. And so this group is basically going and taking a good look, hard look at what's happening with the preempt RT and helping to document it from the perspective of the safety side. So anyone who's interested in the RT side uh, is welcome to join in on those discussions and look at the features and how they're interacting. So you know how the memory protection works, how the fault handling is working, the test infrastructure for checking that you've actually satisfied and you haven't changed anything, and doing the effectively audit of the system requirements that are interacting with the real time. So, so these are all the, uh, this is what this group is focusing on right now. So if that's an interest area to you, um, by all means, please join in. And then on the tool investigations, what they're trying to do is, um, you know, how do we make the kernel better? How do we improve the quality of the kernel? You know, running the various um, code checkers and syscallers and so forth and sending patches and just starting to work with the process of the kernel so that we're not it's a good place to on-ramp into the kernel um, and then help you to clean up the documentation. That's what this team is looking at right now. And they're mostly looking at some of the CICT stuff for improvement. Um, they also interact to a large extent with the systems team with some of our CI flows. Now, the OSEP group is looking at the processes and techniques for the safety engineering principles being implied to systems that have Linux kernel. And so this, in some ways, is at the heart of what we're trying to do with this whole project. Um, and they're sort of trying to focus on a methodology of how do we actually start to explain this all. And there's been a lot of discussions and a lot of um, analysis that's sort of gone on there. And I think the framework is starting to emerge. So you can look on the mail list and see some recent discussions on that that um, Paul has put up. And so I'm hoping you know we're sort of, I think, getting in that stage where we're moving it forward now. Um, but identifying and documenting the safety requirements uh, using STPA is something that we've um, had some success with, and so you'll see a bit of that there too. So what is this STPA I keep on saying? Well, it's System Theoretic Process Analysis. It's a, um, it's a way of looking at things from the process, looking, decomposing a system down. It came out of MIT. Um, there's various working groups that have been using it in the safety space for a while now. And um, everything is open. So again, it's a process that's open. We can go and look at it. You can see it. You can take and build from it. The idea behind it is very basic. Um, it's a hazard analysis technique. And what it's doing is looking at, OK, different diagram of thought. Um, you know, there's inputs and outputs. And you're looking at control actions and then the response from the control action. And it's that control action and the response from the control action and being able to analyze the system in that way lets you start to get at the interfaces and also lets you start to segment the problem into something you can subsequently decompose. Oops. Thank you. It was there. Anyhow, so as you see, you've got a controller with an algorithm of process. You put a control action into your process that's getting controlled and feedback. And what you do is you basically look at your entire system in this way and you successively decompose all the way down until the level you want and what you want to focus on. And so, you know, what we've been looking at is, and like in the medical devices, we've been basically decomposing it from level one, level two, to level three, and level three is effectively in the kernel for us. Okay. Um, and so, hello. 
the, the background we came up with this is the artificial pancreas system. And going down successively that level one and level two analysis that you sort of see here, we actually had to iterate it. We actually came up with an initial level one, and then we had to go down to level two, and we went, oh, we forgot this. So we could go back up to level one and realize, oh, we have to put the more information in. And so this is a way that you can successively refine to actually get a, common, a, a good understanding of a system and build up consensus. And so we started looking at, you know, what's happening with 62304 for the soup requirements, how does it interact with the formal standards, and, you know, best, and we started working on, okay, we're into the level three right now, we're trying to trace the kernel, and so we came up with a white paper on how to do the tracing, and you'll be hearing more from Shua a little bit later on that, and how you can use some of the tools that are out there today to do the right level of tracing to get to the point where we can do a level three analysis. And so, um, you know, this is one of them, and you know, anything from the developers, the open APS system, it's going to a, a glucose monitor. Can you use glucose monitor? There's an insulin pump, and it's interacting with a human body. All of this is out there, and actually it's FDA approved now. There's actually been FDA approval and analysis of it um, as a system, and there's other open source ones that have also gotten FDA approval too. And realistically, some of the, I can point you at papers where it show, there's been scientific studies that are showing that this is doing a better job of monitoring glucose levels over time and keeping things at a reasonable perspective. On the other hand, it's a hobbyist project, and people are not making advertising budgets out of it, but it's a good system for us to analyze because it's all available. It's not behind any NDAs. And so this was why we started looking at this. So we're, we're always looking for good open source systems that we can go and look at from the safety implications. And we found that SCPA was a really good technique for us to start to hone in on what was really important here. And so when, as you can see, when we take it down to level two, we're sort of looking at the system itself. It's running on a Raspberry Pi, off-the-shelf hardware, right? Um, it's got a toolkit running on it. It's got an algorithm. A lot of the algorithm is what the scientific papers will focus on. We're focusing on what's happening with Linux? What's happening in and out of Linux? Could Linux make things go wrong here? And we find a lot of applications out there that are safety critical have Linux sitting as a substrate that people are even not even paying attention to under there. And so what we're trying to do is figure out, okay, what parts of Linux engage when this is running? And how do we start looking at are the requirements necessary for the system to be effective, being satisfied? So well, the recent stuff we've been working has been looking at the workload tracing. And so using s and CS-scope has been getting us most of it, what we've been needing, actually. And so we've got the system calls or frequencies of calls for specific workloads, which is what people will do in a safety analysis anyhow. They'll basically have a whole series of workloads that they're going to talk through and work through. And we're sort of, you know, coming up with this on our own and then looking at what's happening from a tracing perspective to see what parts of the kernel have invoked. And then we can do an STP analysis on those pieces of the kernel and see how the triggers are working. Now, aerospace is a new one, and I haven't been sitting in many of their meetings, so I can't talk too much about them. But um, what they're trying to do is, um, we, we know for a fact that Linux is being used in various applications. Um, basically, SpaceX has been pretty visible about it, uh, that they're using Linux today. Um, and we know that you know others are wanting to do it, and I know this group is trying to figure out, okay, well, what do we really need to think about here when we're working with it, based on these standards, which are very high assurance levels. And so for the avionics industry, you know, how do we get to that insurance level and what sort of checks will we need? I suspect there'll be elements of what we found in other groups. However, the working group's formed, and if you're interested in the aerospace use cases, we're definitely interested in, there's a spot for you to collaborate here. Um, you know, we know that it's being used. It is a broader industry than just the uh, safety critical here. Like, you know, things on the back of your mon your back of your seats, things like that. But there's also the places where it's moving into that safety critical space, and that's where we want to make sure we get ahead of it. We know that Linux has gone to Mars, for instance. We know that it's up in satellites. Um, there is aspects of it that are already being used in practice. The question is, when it becomes safety critical, do we have the right level of analysis? Um, and do we have it visible? So there are certain applications that they're looking at, um, the traditional aerospace, the air tra um, taxi stuff, um, and various commercial drones. These are the scenarios that this group is looking at to try to understand what the implications are. 
So with that, I will say, um, if any of this is interesting to you, um, by all means, it's an open community. Anyone can join in at any point in time. And um, you know, participate in the meetings, contribute the documentation, and so forth. What we're trying to do, though, is come up with processes. And so there's, if you, so there's process discussions that are going on. And that's just part of trying to get a better consensus built up. There's also tooling, though. So if you're interested, in, if that's what makes you happy, there's, there's, there's tools that we need, no question. And with that, um, here's a link on the slides for all the various places where we're meeting, uh, for the various working groups, as well as uh, reviewing the content as it goes up to GitHub and reviewing the various repositories. And with that, does anyone have any questions? If there's anyone online that has questions, um, by all means, we've got that Zoom meeting thing. So feel free to chat, put questions in the chat or um, respond on. And anyone in the room? No? OK, most of these people know. So <laughs> with that, then, I will hand it over to, oh, go for it. Yeah, we'll put the slides up there. No worries. Thanks. We'll be there. Before the evening, I guess. Yep. Just in time slides. You know that drill, don't you? <laughs> Oops, you got uh, your I own. have my, yeah. Okay, thanks. Exactly. Yeah.